In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to work with lists, sets, and tuples, and I'm going to show you their differences as well as their use cases. So a list is a collection of items. Let's say you have a shopping list, and you have apple, banana, and coconut. We're going to print out our shopping list. And here you see apple, banana, and coconut. If you just want to get one of the items, let's say you want to get banana, then you need to know the indexes of a list. So like strings, the first index is always a zero. This is index one, and this is index two. So you can see that there is an order to it. We're going to get our banana and type in shopping list at index one. And there you go. Not only do we get our list, but also our banana. We're going to type in the function type. And this will give you the difference between shopping list alone and then shopping list at index one. So we run the file. And as you can see, the first one is a list. But the second one, once we access an index, you can see that banana is a string. So that's why here it says string. What happens if we try to access an element that is not inside the list? So let's say we want to access index three, but it is obvious that there is no index three. So if that's the case, we're going to get an error saying that list index is out of range. That basically means we're accessing an index that doesn't exist. One way to fix this error is simply to add another element. Let's say we add durian. So durian will be at index three. However, this is too easy. And I want to show you a more standard way to do this by using a method called append. So if I do shopping list dot append durian, then this basically puts the word durian at the end of the list. So let's run this program. And as you can see, when we print out our shopping list, it will have durian. And also we get the item from index three and it will also be durian. So instead of adding at the end of the list, is it possible to add it in the middle of the list or at a certain index? And the answer is, of course, that method will be called insert. So let's say we want to insert the word durian at index one. So we will put one and then durian. So when we print this out, you can see that durian gets put in the second place and the second place would be index one. And so this is index zero. This is index one. This is index two. And this is index three. The opposite to insert is remove. So let's say we want to remove banana. All we have to do is type shopping list dot remove and banana. So now you see that our list only has apple and coconut. A similar method to remove is pop. So if you just do pop, it basically just gets the last element inside the list. So let's say we pop and we store an item. Now what is the last element inside the list? We're going to print out the item. And when we run it, you can see that coconut is no longer inside the list. And we know that the last element is coconut. You can also use pop to get a specific index. So let's say you just want the element at index one. So this should technically remove banana. And as you can see, indeed that banana is no longer inside the list. And we know that our item here at index one is banana. So up to this point, you know how to add an element, you know how to remove an element, but do we know how to change an element or edit it? So let's say we want to change banana to something else. We can do shopping list at index one is equal to coconut. Now that we run it, we see that coconut is indeed at index one. And you can see that it is okay to have duplicates inside a list. If you want to clear your entire list, you can do shopping list dot clear and your list should turn up empty. So the brackets like this indicates that there are no elements inside the list. So we have been working with strings inside a list so far, but did you know that we can also have numbers and other variable types? So let's say here we have a list of numbers, four, two, six, and seven, and their respective indexes. But you can also add in other data types like true and false. And you can, let's say you add a string apple. But for the sake of this example, let's just keep it with numbers. If you want to sort a list of numbers, you can use the sort method. So numbers.sort. And as you can see, now we have two, four, six, and seven. What if you want to reverse the list? The method will simply be reverse. And when you run it, you should get seven, six, two, and four. 
Now, I'm going to show you how to add two lists together. So if you want to add numbers and shopping lists, then the concatenation symbol is simply the plus sign. So numbers plus shopping list. And the result should be 4267 as well as the rest of our shopping list. You can also store your result inside a new list. So we will create a new list L and L equals to numbers plus shopping list. And when you print out L, you will get the exact same result. Another useful feature of lists is that you can check to see if something exists inside a list or not. So let's say you want to check to see if banana exists inside the list shopping, right? So it will be banana in shopping list. And then let's say we also want to check if coconut is inside the shopping list. Now the first one will obviously return true and the second one will return false. Let's change it up a bit. Let's say now you want to ask Python is coconut not inside the shopping list. And the syntax for that would simply be not in shopping list. And now both of these will print out true. And of course, when we run it, we get true and true. Let's sum up what we just covered with list. So list is a collection of items and it has an order to it because you have the indexes like this and you can also change an element. You can remove or add an element and that's what I mean by changeable. And a list can also contain duplicates.